Fire resources are discrete pieces of meaningful data defined by the elements they contain. For example, a patient resource contains identifying information such as birth date and gender, while an allergy intolerance resource contains the severity of the allergy and the date and time of the last allergic reaction. Not all patient or clinical information is considered a resource. For example, a discharge summary is not a discrete piece of data. Therefore, it is too big to be a resource. A birth date is too small to be a resource as it does not have any meaning by itself. The list of defined fire resources is growing. Eventually, there will be up to 200 distinct resources on the HL7 Fire Resources page. The name of each fire resource appears with a number or letter that represents maturity level, meaning how well the standard has been defined. Zero indicates the resource is not defined, three means well defined, and N stands for normative. A normative resource is stable, and any changes are rare and carefully constrained. Most resources include a human readable narrative that can be used in the event that structured data cannot be handled properly. For example, this statement captures key details about a patient's allergic reaction to cashews. Resources also include a URI that uniquely identifies them. Resources can contain other resources, or in some cases, references to other resources. For example, the allergy intolerance resource includes a reference to a patient resource, as it specifies which allergies or intolerances a patient has. Resources are commonly aggregated into a collection called the bundle. This bundle, for example, includes patient and allergy intolerance information. A bundle is helpful in many ways. It allows you to search for a set of resources or perform a CRUD operation on a set of resources in one interaction. Resources that need to be sent in one interaction are aggregated into a single bundle. In the FHIR specification, resources are set up to address common data requirements and to avoid too much complexity and redundancy. For this reason, Resources include defined data elements, such as gender, only when they are implemented in 80% of systems. Specific use cases containing elements not defined in at least 80% of cases, like nationality, may require additional data elements. These are added as extensions to any resource. Because of the flexible structure of both XML and JSON, any fire compliant system will be able to handle extensions as additional information. Now that you have seen some of the examples of FHIR resources and learned how they can be used, visit the HL7 FHIR resources site to see more examples.